Welcome to Eventful Endeavors, secrets to crafting the perfect celebration. If you're planning an event and looking for useful tips from industry experts, you're in the right place. So get ready to take some notes and we'll dive right in. This is Eventful Endeavors. Hey everyone, this is Alyssa with Felix and Fingers and I'm here today with Lexi from Availed Events. Hi Lexi. Hi. We're super excited to have you on today. I um, found Lexi in a weddings Facebook group where there's a lot of good resources. Um, and I love your looking through your work and I just think you'd be such a great fit for this podcast. I'm super glad that you're taking the time to come and share all of your wonderful knowledge with all of our listeners today. So thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to chat with you today. Awesome. Okay, we're going to jump right in. So my first question for you is, what is your favorite thing that you've seen at a wedding recently? I know this is a hard one. Yeah, it is a hard one. Um, we are starting our 2024 season next month. So we haven't had any, well, I guess we had a January wedding, but we haven't really truly kicked off the 2024 season. And so I'm going to probably pull back to 2023. And I think like, what I was so excited about in general in 2023, which um, I would say is mildly carrying over into some of our designs for 2024, but maybe not as boldly is color. Um, and as someone who absolutely loves the design process within planning and designing, um, having to be able to design it with color is just amazing. And so my favorite design last year was a bride who came and said, I want something bold, something different, something that you would never see at a wedding. And she gave me one picture and it was like this inspo picture of Santorini. And so we kind of took that pretty literally and did these bright, bold fuchsia pink flowers and just monochrome. Like there was no mixing with white or lighter pinks. It was just all straight hot pink floral. And it was that. amazing. It was so good. Um, and so I think just that wedding and it was at a private country club. So it just felt like really special to, uh, to the bride and groom. And so um, on top of all that, of the design, it was just a really special day. I love that. I also am a big fan of pops of color. You can't <laughs> see by the flowers behind me. Yeah. For everybody yeah. I'm like a giant poster that has flowers. Yeah. I love the big, bright, bold colors. Me um, too. So while we're talking about your um, planning process and design process, what do you mm -hmm. think your favorite part of that? I know it's like a, for, especially for weddings that you are doing a full planning yeah. for, you know, that's a long process. Yes. So what do you think is your favorite part of the whole thing? Yeah. So it's hard to boil it down to one. So I'm going to slightly cheat and, and say two things. So, and they kind of tie into the same reason um, as to why, but really it's venue selection as well as designing. And for me, it's more, the reason I love both of those activities is because it's kind of like this hunt for the perfect place, the perfect space that really um, exemplifies the couple that's getting married um, and really kind of like diving into how they want their wedding to look and feel. And then obviously once we find that space, then designing a wedding that really reflects them in that space and kind of the, the hunt to find the perfect items that we can either source or rent from many of our great vendors across the Twin Cities um, or have our lovely florist friends design um, from a floral perspective. And so it's just kind of like that, yeah, that hunt and uh, the research that you have to do to, to find the best place or the best designs is like what really gets me excited. Um, and then I'd be remiss not to say like, obviously seeing it all to come together on the wedding day is is also really fun. But um, I love that pre-planning process as well. Definitely, yeah. It's, it's hard to describe how it's things that like somebody might not even directly notice at the wedding, but it the environment does play such a huge piece of mm -hmm. the puzzle and the overall feel mm -hmm. and the vibe of the entire day which is yeah. I think just super cool um so let's backtrack a little bit I want to hear kind of your story how you got here how did you get yeah. into wedding planning and yeah. what was your inspiration and route to get here 
Yeah. So um, thanks for asking. I always tell my clients um, or potential clients that I feel like I have a little bit of a non-traditional background. Um, and that is in the sense of um, I actually started my career at Target Corporate. And so um, I started at Target Corporate about 13 years ago, just right out of college. Um, I had studied business and design at the University of Minnesota, um, but you know, did what a lot of uh, people do is they start to go work at one of the lovely Fortune 500 companies that we have here in the Minneapolis area. Um, and it was a really great experience. It really allowed me to um, understand how businesses work, understand how to communicate, how to lead teams. Um, and I, I really, really love that experience because I feel like I pulled so much from it as I built up a veil. Um, but for me, like the corporate environment just wasn't one for me um, long term. And so uh, as I started to kind of feel like, you know, this itch to do something different, um, I kind of pulled back on the experiences and the roles that I really loved, um, kind of blended with, you know, when someone asks you, like, what do you want to do when you grow up? I would always be like event planner, but I never really saw anyone doing that or like could mo felt like I could do it, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, and so I started to just like ideate and think about, again, those past experiences. And I, during high school and college, I worked at Savvy Formal Wear, which is a, or was a tuxedo and suit rental company. It no longer exists, but I got the opportunity to do a lot of their marketing, a lot of their trade shows, and just work with a ton of couples through that experience and just really, really grew to love the wedding industry. And then kind of in conjunction with that, I've almost always had a side gig like my whole life. So even when I was going to school in high school or college and every side gig has been in either marketing or events. And so I have over 12 years of experience in events from corporate to nonprofit to obviously weddings. Um, and so it was just kind of combining those two loves and passions. And, um, that's kind of how Availed was born. And, um, I know when people read my bio, I'll, I also talk a lot about my mom and how um, her ability to create experiences and celebrations since I was very young has also been something that's been very influential on me and something that I now really try to emulate for my family um, and hope that I also emulate for our clients at Availed as well. I love that. I think transferable skills are such a big thing. And I think that it's become like a big buzzword recently. And I'm so glad that it has because yeah. it really, I think that that well-roundedness really can play into events and really can play into being able to look at all the different sides of it. I would like to say like, I'm a big jack of all trades, mm -hmm. like being able to see everything from every angle really helps. Even you catch those like little details that might be missed. Totally. Otherwise. Totally. Yep. Yeah. Completely. Definitely. Okay, so my next question is a little silly, but what is like the <laughs> wildest wedding moment? Like what's the thing that has been like, oh my gosh, this is the craziest story that I yeah. will never forget? <laughs> yeah, this is a really great question. Um, and it's funny because I would always joke with my leads. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I have a team of eight. And so that's comprised of lead planners and assistant planners. And leads are the ones who can lead a wedding day on their own, hence the title. Um, but I always joke with my leads. I'm always like, all the fun things always happen to you guys. Like my weddings are so like normal and boring. <laughs> like not really, but you know, just like these big, funny, outrageous events never happen at my events. And then um, two summers ago, I was at a wedding up north um, on a family owned property and um, they were in kind of like the automotive um, type industry. And so they had a lot of vehicles on site um, of which were like ATVs and snowmobiles and semis. Um, and yeah, so long story short, the groomsmen had a little bit too much to drink and they were... Um, <laughs> doing like, you know, like when you do like donuts with a car, but they were doing that with a snowmobile um, and burning out and, and apparently ruined snowmobiles. But then furthermore, they decided to then do that with one of the semis um, and the semi caught fire um, and literally blew up in flames. 
Um, I'm and sorry, it's not funny, but I'm like, it's not funny, but it's, it's so it's, outrageous. It's so outrageous. And the only thing I'm slightly disappointed about is I was not there at this point anymore. I had just left. The only reason I'm happy I wasn't there is my car was parked right next to the semi. So I probably wouldn't have had a vehicle, but I get a photo from the caterer like, hey, here's what's happening right now. And I'm just like, I couldn't believe it. Um, and so, you know, a lot of interesting conversations uh, with vendors on the following Monday, like, why are there tread marks in my linens? Or why are there holes through my linens? Or why is there smoke on everything? Um, and oh, so just, gosh. again, conversations I never thought I would be having. Um, but luckily, no one was hurt. Um, you know, they they definitely, um, unfortunately, ruined a couple vehicles in the in the uh, process, but no one was hurt. And uh, the fire department came and got everything put out. And so it was all good. But um, just like completely wild and like literally you will always remember that. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will never, ever forget it. Um, oh, my so, gosh. Yeah, just it, very interesting <laughs> one to share for sure. <laughs> definitely. Okay. So tell me a little bit, you know, we've talked about Availed a little bit, but what are like your long-term plans with Availed? Like where, where's Availed going? What do you think is going to happen next for you? Yeah. Thanks for asking. Um, well, as I mentioned earlier, I've been really focusing on building up my team, um, just ensuring that we can accommodate multiple weddings a weekend and have really great um, leads to lead those days so that, you know, our clients can feel like, um, you know, people get really excited and want to work with me directly, but I obviously can't be there um, at every wedding day. And so I've just been really focused on finding like really awesome people um, to build out my team and really be able to like provide that client experience um, that I uphold us to. But yeah, my, my like ultimate pie in the sky goal is to um, build a venue. So not buy a venue, not like take over a barn or an existing structure is actually find land and build a venue. Um, I've had a specific that. vision um, that I won't talk about because um, I'm going to keep that under wraps, but I've had a specific Nobody vision. Nobody can steal it. For, exactly. For quite a <laughs> while um, and think there's quite a need for this type of venue as well as this in this location. And so, um, yeah, I've been actually actively looking for land for a while now um, and hope to make that dream come a reality. And my hope is within the next five years, but um, I yeah, hope so too. of land for that to happen. So yeah, that's something <laughs> I, as you know, it kind of ties back to the earlier response about like the venue selection being one of my favorite parts of the process. And so just being able to have a space that people feel like is really special and they can celebrate in um, would totally be my dream. So I love that. I love that so much. So I heard a rumor that you're a big foodie. So I have to ask you too, what's the best food that you think you've ever had at a wedding? Oh, at a wedding. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Well, I'm a fan of the non-traditional wedding food. So I had a taco bar at my wedding. So if that like explains God. anything. I'm um, from Texas. So like Tex-Mex okay. tacos is like all I eat all the time. Okay. Yeah. It's, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, we have so many amazing caterers in the Twin Cities, but we wanted something that was just like fun and um, engaging and really easy to, easy to eat. But honestly, my favorite, favorite is um, butcher salt. If you've heard of them, um, they have a food truck and they have a um a mobile bar and they just they do these like phenomenal sandwiches out of the truck with these like incredible rosemary thyme fries and fries are like one of my weaknesses and so um i just love like how fresh their food is and how fun it is and it's just a little bit more of like a relaxed environment um so yeah that'd probably be my answer <laughs> i love that so much um okay i have one last question for you and okay. that is if somebody's at the very beginning of their wedding planning process what yep. is like the number one piece of advice that you would give them yeah um get a planner no 
<laughs> Hire me. <laughs> um, well, yes, but no, I think, you know, what the, one of the things I tell everyone right when you get, get engaged, the most important things to figure out right off the bat are your guest count and your budget. Those two things will really dictate everything you do. Um, obviously, you need to know your guest count so you can figure out what space you'll be in for what space you can hold your wedding in. Um, and then also food and food and drink drive about 40 to 50% of your entire budget. And so um, obviously, the more people you have, the more expensive it is. Um, and so I think those two things uh, are what I always ask my new couples to come with um, right at our kickoff meeting. Um, because I think it really just helps us anchor to back to those two data points. And um, I'll just say, I know the budget conversation can be really difficult, um, especially if, you know, you're asking a family member to support you. But um, I have just found it is um, it is a lot better to have like open and direct conversations up front so that you're not kind of down the road and, and worried about overspend. And so budgeting is definitely something just kind of with my corporate background um, that we really, really heavily focus on and make sure we're anchoring back to in our planning process as well. I love that. That's such good advice for sure. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody so much for listening. Again, this is Alyssa with Felix and Fingers, Lexi from Availed Events. Um, Thank you so much, Lexi, for all of your advice and yeah. coming on today and for everybody listening. We hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to another episode of Eventful Endeavors, Secrets to Crafting the Perfect Celebration. We hope to have left you with some actionable ideas for your own event. If you like the show, please subscribe and definitely leave us a review. We read every comment. So until next time, Happy planning and see you soon on Eventful Endeavors.